trip into town? No, I didn't. Every place we went, folks stared at us. Well, Pearl, you gotta expect that. A handsome woman like you, dressed to the teeth, showing a pretty ankle, folks are bound to stare. You ask me, they were staring at this old truck. I know it's mine, Jed, but it, it just ain't fitting for Beverly Hills. You know what a couple of people yelled at us, Uncle Jed? They yelled, get a horse. <laughs> I reckon they'd stare more at a horse. Jed, why don't you get one of them big, shiny limousines like Mr. Drysdale? Oh, this old truck's right handy for fetching and toting. Need a little polish here and there. Yes, sir, you get you a piece of brick and hone all this rust off of here and then go over the whole thing with coal oil. <laughs> Say, Uncle Jed, if you was to get yourself one of them there fancy limousines, I could be your chauffeur and drive you around in style. Yeah, you could sit in the back seat all doing it up and folks would think you was a duke or a earl or something. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't reckon that fool nobody. Besides, I ain't particularly anxious to have folks think I'm something I ain't. You're a millionaire. Well, I bet you that's just as good as a Duke or Earl. <laughs> All right, get through. Take her around and go to polishing. You know, Jay, Mr. Drysdale could help you get into high society. And you could join one of those fancy clubs and go to stylish parties and get my picture in the paper. I mean, get your picture in the paper. Well, I don't hanker for high society, Pearl, but if you do, I'll speak to Mr. Drysdale. You tell me that when it comes to society, his wife is one of the first hogs to the trough. It, it, it ain't for me, Jed, but it sure would be nice for Ellie Mae. Why, she could be a debutante and have a coming out party and... What's that? Yeah, it's a party where unmarried society girls meet unmarried society fellas. Why, Ellie Mae and me could get a... a that is, Ellie Mae could get a husband in no time. Jed, <laughs> you got my butter churn patched up. Well, I ain't got to quite finish yet, Granny. Jed, do you have to do your chores out here in front where everyone can see you? Well, no, Pearl, but the light's better here, and these iron chairs here make good workbenches. <laughs> What'll the neighbors think with all this stuff out here? Pearl's right, Jed. It does look like we showing off. <laughs> showing off? Oh, I bet there's not another family in Beverly Hills has a butter churn like that. Hmm? Paul, you got Jay Spinwheel fed? She's gonna show me how to make Lindsay Woolsey thread. Oh, Huck. How am I ever gonna get this family in high society? What's that, Aunt Pearl? Well, society is, is, is where a, a bunch of high-class folks do a bunch of high-class things. <laughs> like what? Well, like drinking tea and playing bridge and having parties and getting dressed up and going to the Opry and getting wrote up in the paper. <laughs> uh, I give up. You can't make silk purses out of sow's ears. <laughs> if Pearl so dad blame anxious to drink some tea, I could make her any kind she wants. Some red clover, some slippery elm, or some sassafras. <laughs> I don't reckon it's a tea so much as who she's drinking it with, Granny. Pearl liked to get in with them society women like Miss Drysdale. Yeah. Pearl always was one to want better than what she could afford. <laughs> That's Pearl. Too poor to paint and too proud to whitewash. <laughs> and while I'm sure that the bank examiners will find our fiscal situation to be sound, I am extremely anxious... Oh, Milburn! Do you know who's coming? Yes, the bank examiner. <laughs> I'm sure they'll find your bank ever so tidy. Now to important matters. I have just received this telegram from Priscilla Ralph Alden Smith Standish. She has consented to become our host guest. Oh, surely you're jesting. No. Well, Priscilla Ralph Alden Smith Standish is going to be staying at our house? Yes, indeed, Milburn. Well, who in blue blazers is she? <laughs> Did you hear that? Milburn, how can you be so uninformed and run a bank? Well, I... I have you helping me, dear. Thank goodness. Mrs. Smith Standish is only the president of the Women's Federation for the Preservation and Perpetuation of the FFT of A. First family traditions of America. Well, bully for the FFT of A. But I'm expecting the SBE of C. State Bank Examiners of California. <laughs> Thank you. 
Oh, uh, wait, Milburn. Do I have your permission to put everything in readiness for the arrival of Mrs. Smith Standish? Oh, you have indeed. Good. I'll have the carpets moved out immediately. Fine. <laughs> what? <laughs> Mama, come back here. Now, what were you saying about the carpets? I intend to rid our neighborhood of those uncouth, unsightly hillbillies before the arrival of our prestigious house guest. You do, and the president of the FFT of A will be staying at the YWCA with you. <laughs> when are you going to get it through your head that Jed Clampett's money is one of the pillars of this bank? Mrs. Drysdale, if you'd only take the time to get to know the Clampets, I'm sure you'd agree that they're basically very fine people. Surely you're not suggesting that I mingle with them socially, introduce my friends to them. No, no, don't do that. I'll move away for sure. <laughs> it's obvious that I'll get no understanding or cooperation here. I should have listened to Mother. She warned me against marrying a common bank president. <laughs> Well, we're good now, Granny. What room do you want me to put it in? Well, I reckon in the kitchen, Jed. Then whilst I'm showing Ellie how to work it, I can watch my vittles cooking. All right, I got to do a little more fixing on the bobbin. I'll uh, have that out in a minute. Uh, is it hard to learn, Granny? Well, it's a mite tricky at first. But once you catch on to mixing the wool and the flax together, it comes easy. Don't you go to weaving and spinning in here. I just scrubbed and polished this floor, and I don't want no linsey woolsey dust from that crazy old contraption messing it up. What do you mean, crazy old contraption? I mean that old thing. Now, get it out of here. Well, should I put it in the kitchen, Granny? You put that smack dab right in the middle of this room. Don't you dare. This floor is clean enough to eat off of. Good. Ellie, fetch my pot of jowls off of the stove. <laughs> you splatter one drop of jowl juice on this floor, and I'll wrap the spinning wheel around your neck. <laughs> you touch that spinning wheel, and there'll be more than jowl juice splattered on this floor. You lay a hand on me, and I'll bash you over the head so hard your shoes will have three tongues. <laughs> Drive on out to the airport and pick up Mrs. Smith Standish. I have some slum clearance work to perform. <laughs> well, howdy there, Miss Drysdale. Sure is a nice surprise to have you come and visit. Pearl and me was just talking about you this morning. Pearl's got a hankering to get into society, and I says, well, I hear tell when it comes to society, Miss Drysdale's one of the first hogs to the trough. <laughs> Hey, you're looking mighty green around the gills. Come on inside and have a mess of Granny's uh, jowls and sorghum. That'll put you to feeling bushy-tailed. I'm expecting very important company. Priscilla Rolf Alden Smith Standish. Well, bring him along. We got plenty for the whole bunch. <laughs> Priscilla Rolf Alden Smith Standish is only one woman and probably the world's greatest authority on colonial history early American genealogical origins, and 17th and 18th century artifacts. And she is the esteemed president of the FFT of A. Well, we sure would be proud to meet her. I shall call upon every resource to avert such a social catastrophe. Well, thank you very kindly. <laughs> May I send a truck to pick up this debris? Well, I don't know. I'm sure Granny would let you use anything you wanted, but I don't think she wants to sell. I would only want it for the rubbish collector. Yeah, you're right. They make nice gifts, but like oh, I said... Oh, enough of this. Time grows short. You are a disgrace to Beverly Hills. You win this pile of junk. Why don't you go back to the woods and live in a cave where you belong? Bravo! My sentiments precisely. You are indeed a disgrace. And the sooner you leave this lovely community, the better. Just a doggone minute, fat show. You be careful what you say to our granny. Give us a number of kids. No, 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 no. How dare her to say them things about sweet little granny. Pearl? I hope you ain't in no hurry to get into high society. 
I just don't think that Miss Drysdale is going to be too quick about giving you a leg up. <laughs> All right, I'll take the bags on over to the house. Of course. Thank you. rascal that used to live here. Sure don't know many tunes. He keeps playing the same one over and over again. Jethro, why don't you ask your teacher over to pot school about that music? I'll do it, Uncle Jet. But one thing I know for sure, somebody's gonna come to that door. They always do when you hear that music. <laughs> See? Sure had a peg right. By the way, your mom wants you in the kitchen. Well, honey, ma'am. Tell me, is this your loom out here? Well, no, ma'am. That belongs to Granny. May I speak to her, please? Yeah, you sure can. Come on in. I have reason to believe. Ah, what have we here? Well, that there is my daughter, Ellie Mae. The spinning wheel. Where did you get it? It's Granny's. She says it's been in her family a couple hundred years or better. I've got to meet Granny immediately. Oh, forgive me. I'm Mrs. Smith Standish. Well, howdy, ma'am. <laughs> I'm getting clamped, and uh, like I say, uh, this here is my daughter, Ellie Mae. How do you do? Howdy. <laughs> Granny's out in the kitchen churning butter. Uh, why don't you run fetch her, Ellie Mae? Oh, no, please. Churning butter? You mean by hand? Oh, no, ma'am, with a churn. <laughs> That's another thing that's been in their family a powerful long time. Take me to her, will you, please? I'd be pleasured, ma'am. No use, Granny. You can't get a polish on this pewter junk. <laughs> the best you can, Pearl. How can a body set a decent table with this kind of stuff? Why, if we was to have company, we'd all be disgraced. <laughs> How enchanting. A vignette from the past. Oh, don't move. What a picture. The homespun dress. The colonial dust cap. The churn. The pewter. The old coffee mill? Oh, it's a tableau from another century. Who do you reckon she is, Pearl? Dog, if I know. <laughs> May I get some pictures? What kind of pictures? Well, still pictures. She's a dead blame women <laughs> Hold on, Granny. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, you better take your gun now. We'll have to rush your beer hand. I don't figure this lady is no revenueer. She's just powerful took with old thing. How long have you had this rifle? Well, my pa gave it to me. His pa gave it to him. I reckon his pa done the same. Marvelous. And the churn. How long have you had this? Granny, ain't that the churn that saved your great-great-granny from the engines? It sure is. Oh, tell me about it, would you? <laughs> well, my great great granny was a tote in this turn from the cow barn to the cabin. When two big Indians jumped out of the woods to scalp her, she had beautiful hair, just like mine. You know all the story, Granny. Well, she was out of sorts to begin with, cause it was a hot day, and the butter kept a milking. And with them two redskins trying to snatch her hair, that riled her up, but good. So she yanked up the dasher and she whomped one of them with it. Then she upended the turn over the other one. That old Indian ran out into the woods, all covered with hot, melted butter. He hadn't gone 50 feet when a great big old bar came out of the woods, grabbed that old rascal and licked him to death. <laughs> what a wonderful story. 
from then on, every day that old bar would come around looking for Granny to send him another hot buttered Indian. <laughs> Melvin, do you know what that is? No, what is it? That is a hog jowl. Oh, well, thanks, dear, but I have other plans for lunch. <laughs> I have just been pelted with those repulsive objects by your friends and our neighbors, the Clampets. Melvin, this is the last straw. Call out the militia. Have the neighborhood rezoned. Write our congressman. <laughs> do anything that's necessary but get rid of those hillbillies. Oh, Margaret, they're not a bad sort. They're barbarians. And I warn you, Milburn, just as they brought about the decay of Rome, so Beverly Hills will crumble and... Oh, land. please, Margaret, relax. Oh, you don't understand such things as class war. You're of common birth. <laughs> but we, of the aristocracy, have always had to fear the hostility of peasants. <laughs> I tell you, Milburn, those Clampets are dangerous. If they'll attack me with hot hog jowls, think what they might do to a woman like Priscilla Ralph Alden Smith Standish. <laughs> and she's due to arrive at any moment. Oh, uh, she has arrived, Mrs. Drysdale. Your chauffeur just phoned. He dropped her off at the Clampets, thinking you were there. Oh, they have her. She's been delivered into the hands of those savages. Well, get those savages on the phone. We'll prove to Margaret that everything is all right. This may be the oldest piece of pewter ever to be found on this continent. Now, I'm just mortified, Mrs. Smith Standish. I'm going to have to cousin Jed to get rid of all this junk. Now that he has money, I'm going to throw it all out. No, no, please, it's priceless. Say, Mrs. Smith Standish, if you like old things, just wait till you get into this trunk. You'll be happy as a heifer in red clover. <laughs> Marvelous. Unbelievable. Is this your family Bible? Well, no, not anymore. It got too old. Commenced to crisping and flaking off, so they pitched in and got another one about 100 years ago. It's in there in Well, I'll get it, Uncle Jeff. Hello? Dedicated to Queen Elizabeth. Well, yes, ma'am. This is Jeff. Mr. Clampett. This is an original Geneva Bible. It's sometimes called a Puritan Bible. 400 years old. Oh, why, yes, ma'am, Miss Hathaway. She's right here. Uh, you want on the phone, ma'am? Not now. Tell him I'm all tied up. Hello? Oh, she can't talk right now. She's all tied up in Uncle Jed's trunk. <laughs> Hello? Hello? <laughs> my president, or she suffocated in that trunk. <laughs> Mr. Drysdale, I am certain the Clavins would not do violent harm to Mrs. Smith Standish. Jethro has a way of confusing the facts. I can't tell you how thrilled I am to participate in this historical recreation. No, honey, this is what you call spinning. You gotta hold your thread tight. I will, I will. Oh! 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 Woman, <laughs> Madam President, what have they done to you? Melvin, call the police. I want these ruffians seized and hanged immediately. <laughs> what are you doing? Rescuing you from the grimy clutches of these peasants. <laughs> peasants? My dear Mrs. Drysdale, it may interest you to know that I have established almost beyond a doubt that Mr. Clampett here is a direct descendant of the first man to come ashore at Jamestown, Virginia, May 13th, 1607. What? <laughs> you mean? I mean that when your family and my family arrived on the Mayflower, his family was waiting for them. <laughs> oh! 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 Uh, Mrs. Miss Tandy, surely there must be some ghastly mistake. Perhaps you're in a state of shock from the way these people mistreated you. I've never been more hospitably treated in my life. I've dined on hog jowls, sorghum, 
homemade bread, fresh churned butter, served on pottery that might have been unearthed at Williamsburg. And I've eaten this delicious food with ancient pewter implements that would grace any museum. That reminds me, I better go wash them dishes. Oh, Granny. You know, I'm sure that Mrs. Drysdale would consider it an honor and a pleasure if you would permit her to wash these historic dishes, hmm? What? Oh, she would indeed consider it an honor, wouldn't you, Margaret? Well, uh, whatever Madam President says, of course. <laughs> well, I better come along and see if I got enough lye soap. Lye soap? How ghastly. Make it myself. You make your own lye soap? Got to. You can't buy it in Beverly Hills. I offered to show Mrs. Drysdale how to make it, but she didn't care to learn. Mrs. Drysdale, am I to understand that you are ignorant of the process by which your own colonial ancestors made their soap? Well, Madam President, I... Oh, your education has been shamefully neglected. <laughs> more lie in some possum renderings, Miss Drysdale. Oh, Mrs. Drysdale, I hope you appreciate the historical significance of this opportunity. You are reenacting the making of soap just as it was done more than 300 years ago. <laughs> oh, yes, indeed, Madam President. <laughs> I'm, I'm through. <laughs> she's so happy, she's crying. <laughs> I wouldn't have missed this for a million dollars. Tax exempt. <laughs> oh, Chief, the bank examiners are waiting. Yes, I know, I know. Oh, Mrs. Smith Dandish, I don't forget you promised to let my wife wash dishes, too. Oh, I wouldn't think of depriving her of the thrill of handling those authentic colonial implements. <laughs> and in the good old colonial way, no automatic dishwasher. Oh, heaven forbid. <laughs> Mrs. Smith Vandish, I have known you only a few brief minutes, but already you are one of my favorite people. <laughs> we shall return. I've lost my coiffure, my mascara, and my manicure. Oh, best forget about them, honey. If they fell in that soap, they's dissolved by now. <laughs> I can steer you up a few more things to wash if it pleasures you. Oh, no, please. Look what this lye soap has done to my head. Yeah. They is nice and pink and rosy, ain't they? Raw, raw, raw. I don't blame you for cheering. <laughs> I thought you left. I couldn't tear myself away from the picture of my wife washing dishes. <laughs> She's taken to it like a cold hog to warm mud. <laughs> <laughs> 